Another one that's pretty, I think, common in in the United States, at least for example, um, is magnesium. And magnesium is an essential essential mineral. About 50% of the U.S. population does not basically get adequate intake of, of magnesium. And um, the RDA for adequate intake was set at around, I would say on average, it's, it's a little different for, for uh, males and females, but on average about 400 milligrams per day for an adult. And um, if you are a physically active adult, so let's say you exercise frequently, you are you know, maybe using the sauna, you can excrete magnesium through sweat. And so physically active adults actually require anywhere between 10 to 20% more than the RDA. So you can imagine if people are already not even getting the RDA, um, the physically active people are even, you know, in worse shape in, in some, some respects. And magnesium is an essential cofactor. It's a mineral that is important for the function of over 300 different enzymes in our body. Everything from enzymes that are important for repairing damage to our DNA. So DNA damage is something that's happening every day. It's happening right now as we're having this conversation. It's um, not something that you can look in the mirror and see, but it is insidious in 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 respect um, with respect to basically it causes this low level type of damage that accumulates over time. And as we age, it can lead to dysfunctional cells. It can uh, lead to potentially what are called oncogenic mutations that can lead to cancer. So repair enzymes do not work properly without magnesium. Um, also DNA synthesis. So we're making new cells. We're making new blood cells. We're making new immune cells. We're making new skin cells. Every time we make a new cell, we have to replicate all the DNA inside of those cells. And that requires enzymes called DNA polymerases. Those are, you, you basically need magnesium for those to work fun, uh, properly, you know? So again, it's a very important process for our DNA and repairing the DNA and making sure it doesn't get mutations from the get-go with DNA replication. And it's probably why there's so many, there's a, a variety of studies that have found, these are observational studies. Of course, all the caveats that come with observational studies, like there's you know potentially other confounding factors. But um, with that in mind, people with the highest magnesium levels have a 40% lower all-cause mortality and a 50% lower cancer mortality compared to people with the lowest magnesium levels. Um, there's another study that... Um, I think it was specific to pancreatic cancer. So for every 100 milligram decrease in magnesium intake, there was a 24% increase in pancreatic cancer incidence. So again, you know, sort of highlighting the important role magnesium plays, particularly with our DNA and, you know, with respect to making sure the integrity of our DNA, the genomic stability, stability of our DNA is, is good. Um, and that's very important for preventing cancer, which is an age-related disease. It's something that you want to try to do everything you can to prevent. Of course, there are things outside of our control. However, there are things that are in our control. And I think, um, you know, an easy thing would be magnesium. So why is widespread deficiency common? Magnesium is found at the center of a chlorophyll molecule. Chlorophyll is the molecule that gives plants their green color. So magnesium is high in dark leafy greens. Most people are not eating multiple servings of dark leafy greens daily. It's also pretty high in legumes. Almonds are another great source of magnesium. Oats are a great source of magnesium. Um, so the bottom line is people aren't eating enough of their leafy greens. Supplemental magnesium uh, is another possibility, but you know the the dose of that is needs to be considered because magnesium at higher doses can cause adverse effects like GI problems. So um, what I like to do is try to get my magnesium from dietary sources. Like this morning, I had a smoothie with some cooked kale. I had some chard in it. I had frozen, a couple of frozen strawberries and blueberries and avocado. So I was getting a magnesium dose with my breakfast, right? Which was scrambled eggs. So, um, you know, having, trying to find any way you can to get multiple servings of greens or almonds, you know, oats are another great, great uh, dietary source. But I also do a supplement of about 125 milligrams of magnesium and I do magnesium glycinate. Um, most of the magnesium supplements are 
with respect, um, I would say the one that's not very bioavailable is magnesium dioxide. But you could, you know, magnesium glycinate's a really good bioavailability, uh, has very good bio, bioavailability. So does magnesium malate or magnesium citrate. So sup in the, it, with respect to supplementation with magnesium, it can be a way to kind of at least get you um, up to more of an RDA adequate level. Um, also, when I sauna, when I'm physically active, I also drink electrolytes after that. And that's another, so you can have an electrolyte drink that replaces some of the lost sodium and magnesium, potassium, for example. So that's also another option when you're also physically active. 